Good afternoon, Jim Dobre. Some time ago on our channel, we reviewed the Cold Steel Polish Saber, and I praised it quite highly. However, since that time, I've studied Polish Saber and Polish Saber techniques, and I've also made further purchases. Take this for example. This is a genuine custom-made Hussar Saber made by a Polish blacksmith. It is a lot more expensive than the Cold Steel model. However, as you can see, they are comparable models. So for today's video, I'm going to have a side-by-side -side look at detailed comparison between the mass-produced Cold Steel model and this blacksmith model. And we're going to talk about the differences and we'll see if my opinion has changed of the Cold Steel model now that I have an absolutely premium Shabla. Okay, the logical place to start our comparison will be the physical appearance and aesthetics of the two pieces. Now, in this regard, you get a lot of bang for your buck with the cold steel model. There's these inlays here on the front of the guard, on the thumb ring, on the back, on the side, these details here, the red leather is quite eye-catching, and the one thing I absolutely love more than anything else is this braided wire here on the grip. I just love that little detail. As opposed to this, the Hussar Sabre from Poland is a lot more sleek. It's a lot more straightforward. Now, I definitely asked for this as I wanted a more utilitarian piece. And if you want like a highly detailed engraved piece, you can get that however it comes at a price. So, like I said, bang for your buck wise, the cold steel is quite the eye-catching piece. Now to briefly look at the scabbards. Now, as you can see, the cold steel has got a bit more metal fittings, has got some more details, and they're a bit heavier duty. That ring there, for example, compared to that one. And they are very similar in design, in the placement of where the rings are, in the end cap. Obviously, this one is a lot more sleek. It's black, and it has a matte finish. This has the red leather, and the very polished steel, a bit more eye-catching. But the scab is not the most important detail. One thing I will say, however, though, is if we look down here, Cold Steel has got this steel end cap here. The top comes over. Now, also you can see inside there, there is this kind of plasticky, I don't know what that is, but basically grips the sides of the saw to keep it in place. And that's quite a nice thing. However, as great as that is, I don't like these metal caps completely. Unlike katana scabbards, which are all timber, you can like run the edge of the blade along here if you see that, and it'll dull it quite quickly. You could spend a lot of time sharpening it only to ruin it simply by pulling it in and out if you're not very careful. Now, obviously the blacksmith took this into mind because his is just, it's just leather and I believe timber here. So there's no chance of dulling your edge on that. All right, we'll look at the layout of the grip and handguard. Now, I'm not going to try and debate which one is the most historical accurate one as I'm not an expert on that, and there's many different models to choose from and different designs throughout the history of Poland and neighbouring countries like Hungary and whatnot, which you can take inspiration from. So, we'll just, that aside, we'll just look at what we've got. Now, this one here, the blacksmith took a measurement of my hand and created it specifically for my grip. Now, as you can see, that obviously fits absolutely perfectly. Now, this hugs my fingers well without constricting them, and the thumb ring is just perfectly placed. The pommel here at the end, too, locks the hand in, and there's a bit of weight here to counterbalance the blade. Very, very absolutely perfect. The cold steel one. Now, this grip here is a bit oversized as you can see it is much larger than the hussar saber now obviously cold steel have to make a one size fits all so it's a bit bigger my hand's not exactly the smallest of hands i'm on the relatively larger size 
So as you can see, it fits me comfortably with a bit of room at the end. The pommel here does not lock your hand in. Now, there are historic models where it's exactly like this, so that's no detriment. It's just having your hand locked in precisely definitely is a luxury of having this custom-made one. Another thing people brought up is the placement of the thumb ring. So if we look at them side by side. Now, you can tell here, this thumb ring is ends a bit lower on the handle. The cold steel one loops almost back up to this cross section. So, does that make a difference? Unfortunately, now that I have both of them for a side-by-side -side comparison, yes it does. That is a much more comfortable grip than that. It's a struggle to sort of form the iron loop here of the uh, iron key that grips the handle. That's not exactly, it's not as bad. Some people say, oh, it's so bad you can't handle it. However, no, I think that's still, it's functional. It's just having that loop come back up in here rather than end down here lower. It certainly does make a massive difference. Now, both of them, the guard must obviously protect your hand. It needs to be heavy duty. Side by side, even though the cold steel is the larger of the two, the blacksmith made Hussar Sabre, it has a more heavy duty guard. As you can see here, this metal is thicker the more that is on the cold steel. The lengthwise, it's only slightly longer at the back. The cold steel one definitely protrudes more at the front. Now, I've seen this on historic examples. Some of them, they protrude more than this cuts back in at a greater angle. Whereas this one bows out rather than came back in. So I can see the difference here is a slight design difference. However, this definitely does not have the meat on it that this one here has. Also, if you can see in here, the detail that is a very nice, the way it cuts back in there is just, yep, focus. And also it's got a ridge in the center of this knuckle bow. The cold steel has got the little decoration, however, it's just flat. So this is much more mechanically sound, I believe. It's much more heavy duty. It's much more functional, and this is more eye-catching, but not quite as good. Alright, time to talk about the most important part of any sword, the blade itself. Now, one quick thing to note first up is that the custom-made one here has got a little maker's stamp down at the base of the blade. Nice little touch to let you know that it's custom-built by a blacksmith. Not a mass-produced one, as the cold steel one is. Now, lengthwise, the cold steel has got perhaps an extra inch length over the Hussar Sabre. This is probably mostly due to the elongated tip here. It's definitely a lot more pointier and therefore be a better superior thrust in blade. The Hussar Sabre comes to a much more abrupt tip. Not as good as thrust in as the cold steel. However, there's a bit more width and meat here in the last quarter of the blade, which would make it a superior slicer. Another thing it has advantage, I guess, technically, is it's got this lovely false edge that goes down to about here. Now, this allows you to do false edge cuts, or the nizhik as it's called, and curve around an opponent's defense as they are a sort of specialty trick cut, and you need a sword with a false edge to do it and the curvature of the blade, which I might add is virtually identical on the two swords, is something that allows you to sweep around the opponent's defenses and apply that false edge. Another difference in the blades is the placement and number of fullers. You can see here the cold steel has got twin fullers which essentially run three quarters of the way up the blade and end here. The Hussar one has got a single fuller and it runs almost the entire length of the blade. It ends abruptly up here, only a mere 10 millimeters or less from the actual tip. Now, you may think this is all there is to blade geometry. However, 
there is something a lot more special about this style of blade which we're going to take a look at now okay come back to the switches now when we turn the blades over and examine the spines as you can see there's a dramatic difference in thickness between the hussar saber and the cold steel the hussars is extraordinary thick on the back here and as you can see they both have a nice distal taper so if we follow it down the hussar saber remains incredibly thick right up to this point where it changes to the false edge now basically as you can see it's overall thicker in the spine than the cold steel and dramatically so in my original video reviewing the cold steel polish saber many people commented on the weight they said that at 1113 grams it was far too heavy and basically as i read a source saying that sabers historically weighed anything between 600 to 1200 grams I thought yes it is heavy but not quite outside the heavier range and people said that cold steel swords lack distal taper I could obviously see this had distal taper as you can see the point of balance is not unreasonably far from the handle about a fist and a half so while slightly forward weighted slightly heavy I felt it still met historical parameters now admittedly my technique was not very good back then I'd mainly cut using large draw cuts and do tempo cuts by flicking the wrist I've since learned much more nuanced and technically correct methods and historically accurate methods of wielding polish saber and once you start applying that these very nuanced finger driven cut techniques suddenly it appears and feels to be really awkward to handle and I can understand where those reviewers who said to me that yes it's too heavy and doesn't handle well where they were coming from so now that I have inside my own hands an expensive custom made genuine polish blacksmith hussar saber does it handle differently well the answer is yes it handles dramatically differently when you do these just plain finger cuts it moves very swiftly in the hand very tight molinaise are very easy you do the classic cross cutting techniques very well now there's a lot more of a complicated finger technique I've learned in delivering these cuts and the thumb ring placement definitely makes a difference the sword just feels really quick as well much faster than cold steel one now this weighs at 925 grams therefore the difference in weight is 200 grams the point of balance is relatively the same as cold steel about a fist and a half from the guard so this 200 grams difference or less than 200 grams i should say does that make the entire difference in handling i don't think so i think there's more at play here now there's obviously more weight and metal in the guard here there's obviously more meat on the spine of the sword and it is thicker towards the end so somehow there is a dramatic difference here in the blade geometry which makes this sword handle so much more dramatically better and i think it is the actual blade profile now by profile i don't mean side on i mean this way if you could imagine slicing the blade down the center here and taking a look at how it's built I think that would be the key to why it handles so much different and so dramatically easier than the cold steel one one of the main reasons I feel that gives the Hussar Sabre a definitive edge over the cold steel Sabre when it comes to handling is the blade profile now I'm not going to snap them in half and show you the inside how, what the blade looks like in order to illustrate my point oh I'm relying on using the old wood splitter here to show you what I'm talking about now if you could imagine this is the cross section of a single edge sword now a double edge would obviously be a diamond but single edge is more like a wedge or a triangular shape the spine of the sword the back has to be strong it supports the entire sword through violent actions parrying striking hitting targets hard 
Therefore, if that's too thin, chances of snapping your sword in half are greatly increased. Now, the thick, the, the sword itself, the wider it is, the better angle, the more finer angle you can get on the blade in order to increase slicing capacity. So, essentially, what you need is width and thickness at the back. Now, unlike the wood splitter here, the goal is to keep the weight down. It's the opposite of this, therefore they've added metal. But for sword blades, the fullers, contrary to some of the misinformation you might have heard in all the books and whatnot where they claim you stab someone, the sword sticks in them, unless there's a groove for the blood to flow out and then to pull the sword out, that's complete nonsense. The fullers are there to save weight. So you have your basic blade profile like this. If you etch a bit out on each side, that saves a bit of weight but maintains the overall structure. Now the cold steel blade is kind of like this. It has a relatively conventional wedge or roughly triangular shaped cross section. However, the Hussar Sabre has got a much more specialised, much more Polish style in which it's more like a T, if you could imagine. So you have the thick spine, then you have, it cuts in with that one fuller, and then after that, rather than the triangle being a continuation of the rest, it's a narrower triangle from there on. So the, the profile, if you will, it's closer to a T than a wedge. Now, it'd be hard to say to get the exact same weight, everything the same, but a more conventional blade profile and see how handles have. I feel this is a big factor and when I do some cut tests with it, I think it's going to make it a very good slicer having that T-shaped cross section. All right, so final verdict. Which one's the superior Polish saver? Obviously the custom made Hussar saver from Poland. This just handles better, it's just amazing to use and I'm going to have a lot of fun when I get to do some cuts with this tomorrow on some tatami mats. Does that mean the cold steel Polish saber is absolute rubbish? No, I don't think so. Now you see, here's where the Polish saber from cold steel really comes into its own. This saber here from Poland costs three times as much. There's no way it's soft now. This is three times as expensive as this. Also, the guy who made this, he's in demand. So you're on a waiting list for eight months before he even starts making it for you. Now, was it worth the wait? Most definitely. Was it worth the price? Depends on your financial situation. However, if you want to compare these to cars, this is like your Ford or your Holden, your classic sedan that can drive fast, it looks good, it can get the job done. Whereas this is more like your luxury European sports car, like a Mercedes or a BMW or something like that. It's more elegant, refined. It definitely handles better. It's technically superior in every way. However, it's up to you and your personal financial situation as into what car you drive in. Now, obviously, if you're a true fanatic such as me, you want both of them in your garage. You're, um, weekly drive and your weekend luxury ride so why not both however i did give this a 10 out of 10 when i first reviewed it and i stand by that for a functional beautiful to look at highly durable incredibly tough and affordable entry level polish saber you can get nothing else even compares to the cold steel one however once you graduate refine your technique if Polish Sabres becomes your passion, you might want to invest in a really, really nice one. So, each to their own, it's up to where you are in life, both financially and in your love of Sabres as to which you choose. I just thought it was interesting to compare mass-produced cold steel versus custom blacksmith work. And I hope you enjoyed the closer look at the details. Till next time, go with Zinger.